As the Secretary General of the United Nations, an organization of 147 member states who represent almost all of the human inhabitants of the planet Earth, I send greetings on behalf of the people of our planet. We step out of our solar system into the universe seeking only peace and friendship to teach if we are called upon, to be taught if we are fortunate. We know full well that our planet and all its inhabitants are but a small part of this immense universe that surrounds us and it is with humility and hope that we take this step. Last transmit broadcast finished. Proceed final remote profiling mission. Gumeguanjong, woman Chiao Shou Yi Pan the Rizu, Jung Yi Dao Laila. Sisuka, Di Chu Guoji, Yu Jin Dui Guoji, Chitong Chuan Ren Lei, Do Jiang Taru Yiga, Ji Dong Ren Xin the Xin Ji Yuan. Woman Yao Wang Yi Jiu the Lin Ju, San Ti Jin Dui the Chen Shao Tan Si Chi, Mu Xian Yi Jing Di Da Tai Yang Xi. Ching Rao Woman, Ji Yi Zui Jin Chen the Wen Ho. This is Fleet International Launch Control. We've passed the 10 minute mark in our countdown. We are presently on time to launch the Mantis capture mission. We are 9 minutes 50 seconds and counting. Our observations team, operated by Fleet International and overlooked by Solar Fleet Joint Conference, are currently slowly orbiting around the probe. While we keep our eyes on their readings, we'll go ahead and listen in on our network's remote observations experts and their thoughts on this historical extraterrestrial contact. One thing that interests me a great deal is the way in which the public perception of uh, beings from outer space have, have changed over the years. They used to be the baddies, but now there is a there's a sort of optimistic feeling that, that any extraterrestrial life is, if not benign, is at least not as, as hostile and aggressive as one used to fear. Is this the drift of your writing as well, Arthur? Uh, your uh, thinking? Yes, I'm an optimist, and I believe that any malevolent super-civilization would rapidly self-destruct, as we may be in the process of doing ourselves. So if we do have contact, physical contact with aliens, I think it will be benign. Do you think that other planets might have uh, the same kind of system in which there would be a morality, in which there would be people taking moral attitudes, which may not necessarily be the same as ours, of course? Well, all societies must have some moral structure. I mean, otherwise you just can't have a society. There must be understand rules, the way you behave to our neighbors. So morality, in some way, is essential and universal. There's an incredible level of craftsmanship to these little things. Whatever manufacturing processes were used to achieve the smoothness, finish and overall purity is unprecedented. We should have some magnified scanner images coming in shortly. You have to wonder what it looks like on the microscopic level. Because the electromagnetic forces are simply not that strong to stack the atoms side by side. Or possibly a well-contained viscous metal not too different from mercury. I'm going to go ahead and assume a relatively low melting point. Interesting. Possibly a protective shell or impermeable coating for an unapparent ecosystem? Temperature of the surface. Absolute zero. Life anywhere in the universe must be made of the same elements. It principally constitutes it here. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. As we move, fracture allows us to discover the structure of a rugged landscape materializing. Here and there, a scattering of white specks. They're tiny particles of dust that have settled on the surface. Well, unlike gravity and electromagnetism, it only dominates at the very small scale. It's way stronger than all the other forces, and it's what's holding the nucleus together, and then the components of the protons and neutrons inside the nucleus as well. Now, the thing that fascinates me about this is that it is infinite in detail. You can go on forever and ever. Now, I would like to ask Stephen this question. 
Is the real universe also infinite in detail? I mean, we know we have molecules, atoms, electrons, protons, subatomic, right down to the quarks so far. But does it continue forever and ever? Or is there a limit? Is there a basement to the real universe? I suppose if you were to ask what instrument would be the image of the announced topic, you surely would say people are going to talk about what they see through a telescope. But in fact, at least uh, most of the uh, speakers have really spoken on the topic what they see in the mirror. The simple truth is that before we can communicate with others successfully, we must first learn to communicate with ourselves successfully with all the different peoples and nations of the earth. Can conceive of no nightmare as terrifying as establishing such communication with the so-called superior or, if you wish, advanced technology in outer space. I don't think that physics tell us how to behave to our neighbors. I don't want to make contact with another civilization, except at a safe distance. The object's evolution is circular, one meter in diameter, and appears to be 3.5 meters in depth. In terms of materiality, the blended substance currently remains undefined with no traces of any existing elemental properties within our databases. Based on our current radio wave transmitters, no life has been detected. First of all, there's no real objection to escapism. The only people who don't like it, who object to escapism are, are jailers. And uh... <laughs> it's quite concerned lest this contact bring physical and mental harm to those persons whom we, those beings whom we might hypothetically contact. I think, on the contrary, that an enormous distance separates us from the nearest group of a similar kind. That means that even traveling at the speed of light, no answer to communication. They say, hello, you say, how are you? And he says, fine. That conversation will take at least centuries. <laughs> and the cost of getting energy enough to make travel, physical travel at all possible, is overwhelming, even for civilizations disposing of enormous means far out outweighing our own. So I am not either fearful, nor I would say terribly expectant. I don't think we will hang. I'm anxious for that first acquisition to make sure that we are not alone. How do you think anybody would have reacted? My guess is that it would be something like, uh, oh, look, another artifact from uh, some extremely primitive civilization. We were thoughtful enough to send a message into the far future, which could in no way benefit us, uh, certainly a selfless act. Perhaps it would be recognized as a um, hopeful and optimistic gesture by a, an emerging civilization just setting foot into the great galactic wilderness. To some more advanced civilization, science and technology in outer space doesn't thrill me, but just the opposite. I try to imagine back where I'm at. As we stare on, under the twilight of our solar system, the object appears so silent, like a tomb. 
它是如此的安静、平和、孤独、脆弱。正是它的独一无二，打动了我们。我们无法想象，一个被摧毁了无数次的文明。为何依旧如此的沉稳、安详？最后，就让我们一同祈祷，见证两个文明接触的伟大时刻吧。T minus eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running. Lift off. We have lift off.